accelerate in its expansion against the wishes of gravity. We don't know what's causing that either. We call that dark energy. But that's just the whole thing. Fred and Ethel. Here we go. Fred and Ethel. We, we don't know what they are, but they've been measured. And in fact, days ago, the Nobel Prize was announced. <coughs> the Nobel Prize was announced. And it went to three of my colleagues for discovering dark energy. Adam Reese was a graduate student when this happened back in the 1990s. So they, these are relatively young guys for Nobel Prize. They usually wait till you're almost dead. <laughs> you know, you're like, you're a breather in a, in a, in a nursing home and say, here's 1.3 million dollars. You know? What's the, at that, what are you going to do? So they got, so now they're young enough, maybe they can do something with their one third of 1.3 million dollars. But, just to show you this, oops, what just happened? I'll be back. That's not cool. There we go. So, let me tell you the depth of our ignorance. I love talking about ignorance. Here we go. Of all the things that drive the universe, 74% of it is dark energy. We don't know what that is, that's happening. 22% of it is dark matter, that's Fred. All the laws of physics that I tell you about, that gets us to Mars, that gives us our understanding of quantum physics, and electronics, and orbits, and everything we know and love about this universe, applies to 4% of it. The rest, we have no clue what it is. So the discovery of what dark matter is, or what dark energy is, would be the discovery of the millennium, as far as I'm concerned. And that will take us from a 4% knowledge of the universe to something much larger. Perhaps 100%, or maybe getting there shows us another domain of ignorance that we can't even think about because that's in the way. That's our state of knowledge of today. There'll be Nobel Prizes ready to hand out once those are figured out. The Big Bang. You know, some people are uncomfortable with the Big Bang. And I, I can understand that, I suppose. Some people even sort of uh, 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 take to the roads with the here's one. I thought this was good. Um, <laughs> Big Bang, you gotta be kidding, God. Um, so, this is interesting because people spend money to do this. They felt really strongly about it. And so, um, the funny thing is, it, the interesting thing about scientific results is that they don't really care how you feel or how your emotional state is in response to it. If the data shows what's going on in the universe, that's the data. And what you gotta break out of that, I wish it were not that way, or I hope it's not that way, or I don't wanna think it's that way. Uh, okay, but stay out of the science classroom if that's how you feel about it. The other places. space-time diagram of the, our current understanding of the universe. We have the Big Bang, it's that flash at the left. Uh, there's a dark age, a period of dark ages before stars were born. That's kind of a fun time where the universe is dark. Then stars are born, and they uh, coalesce to form galaxies. We're living in the present, and that little spacecraft off to the right made the measurements of that afterglow of the Big Bang, which is uh, labeled at 400,000 years. Here's a better image of that afterglow. This is a, the closest thing we have to a baby picture of the universe. Color-coded for where matter has collected and where there are voids. 
it's this patterning that brought itself into the structure of the cosmos that we now see today. But we can take it one step further. If there's more than one planet, we used to think it was only Earth. That's even before we thought of Earth as a planet. And then we saw, surely the sun is special. No, it's one of 100 billion stars in the galaxy. Surely the galaxy is special. No, that's one of 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Well, at least there's one universe. Well, maybe not. Current thinking has considered the multiverse, where we are just one bubble out of some uncountable number of bubbles churning in a higher dimensional sort of uh, space, each one of these bubbles would itself be a universe, and we are one of them. Here's what's interesting about this. Quantum physics tells us that if we have these universes being spawned, they have slightly different laws of physics going on in them. So you don't want to visit one of these universes, because if the charge on the electron is slightly different, you could implode, or explode, <laughs> or your, 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 your organs will fall out. Some, some, something bad is going to happen to you. So for the time being, stay in this universe. <laughs> we don't know how to draw it, so these are artists' attempt to, to do this. Uh, I want to go fast through the next set of slides, because I want to put some things in context. But I got to go fast because I'm talking too long here. I'm sorry about that. I want to, let's go to the United States, early 21st century. Well, when is that? Oh, that, that's now. Okay. I detect a certain fear of science in our land. It's, it, it's a fear combined with ignorance. Here's a book that I was able to buy from the bookstore. How to defend yourself <laughs> against <laughs> alien abduction. I bought that book. I read that book. I heeded its advice. Because I wanted to make sure I was here today. Sure enough, I was not abducted at all as well. We live in a country where you can write this book, a publisher can print it, and a bookstore can sell it, and a citizen can buy it. That's the country we live in right now. That's a little scary, I think. Here's another one. We got the, there's a 2012 frenzy out there. <laughs> Tactics and survival places for the coming pole shift. The pole is just fine. Nothing's gonna happen to the pole. There's no planet Nibiru. The planetary alignment is real, by the way. December 21st. Earth, the sun, and the center of the galaxy where there's the, there, the black hole, only 600 million times the mass of the sun. We're going to line up with that. And people are worried, doesn't that mean we're going to knock off our axes? No! It's not, you got to ask the right next question. It's not tell me so I can I believe something or another. That's not the right question. Ask how often do these three things align? They align every year, December 21st. <laughs> and the poll is just fine. Okay. How about the Mayans? The Mayans predicted the end of the world in 2012. That happens to be when their calendar jump starts again. To some people that means the universal end. But you want to believe that the Mayans somehow had a deep knowledge of the fate of the universe? When they didn't even know that their civilization was going to end at the hands of the Spanish conquistadors? You think, you think if they had prognosticating abilities, they should have seen that coming. <laughs> they didn't see that coming, I'm not giving any reason. <laughs> Get me started. <laughs> Get me started here. Here's a newspaper. Daily News, New York, New York City newspaper. Mars in 2003 was the closest it was to Earth in 60,000 years. That's true. No one alive or ever in the history of the world would have seen Mars as close to Earth as you would have that night. So here's the headline, close up. But nobody asked the next natural question. How much closer is it? How, how much closer is it than other times it's been close? Okay? 
Which way is west from here? We'll just show, point with your hands. No one is bringing up their head. Okay. <laughs> we have some consensus that west is that way. Okay. okay. West. So this is. So I mean, I'll tell you. You know what it's like today? I'm here. I'll be like this. Ready? I've never been this close to California before. Okay? That's, that's what this is. <laughs> so we're so hell-bent on celebrating a record that we don't assess the meaning of that record. This is part of the science literacy that we are absent today. Here's one. Some more science literacy. Anyone work for Bayer here? Good. Okay, so here are two kids presumably in middle school or early high school, and this is a program that Bayer, the company, has to celebrate the fact that their scientists go into the classroom to, get, to give the kids direct encounters with scientists and engineers. Admirable program, for sure, no problem. I got no issues with that. So, but here, so one issue is to try to show two students who are kind of disinterested, and that's your big challenge as the engineer teacher. So I have an issue. First, they show a black kid and, and a girl. So these are the, the challenging cases here. How about the white kid with the tattoo who just got off the motorcycle? Where is he? Okay? And that came out. So these are the problem cases, apparently. Okay. So it says you're wrong. Try to get them interested in why lighter things fall faster than heavier things. Or it's lighter. I think, what? Lighter things fall faster. Not in this universe! <laughs> Have you ever seen something lighter fall faster than something heavier? No, so somebody wrote that. Somebody typeset it. Somebody arranged it in the air. Someone proofread it and nobody caught this egregious error of physics. <laughs> Bayer employees volunteer at a hands-on inquiry-based program, making science make sense, to help kids develop a lasting passion for science. It's that whole chain of people who should have been pictured in this way. <laughs> so they can finally fix it, okay? This is a fixed step. You're on. Get them interested in why minor things fall as fast as heavier things. So they finally got it. That's true, that's the Galilean experiment with the with the, can, the, the, the cannonballs dropped from the leaning tower piece, which you didn't actually do. But it works even if you try it. Just take something heavy and say, I can do that here. So let me try, uh, I got it here. So I have a shoe and a pen. So presumably the shoe weighs more than the pen. I will let them go at the same time. Oh, you can put the image on me now. There we go. So. So, uh, I'll let them go at the same time. Final thing. I'll, I'll be happy to take those applause, but that's just really Newton's laws of physics. <laughs> Newton is charged with it. Okay, other things, like, we don't understand probability. Physicists do. That's why this happened. <laughs> Which said this is physics, we were invited to Vegas. If this were convention to take place, Vegas. And that we were asked to never return to the city. <laughs> we got a fear of numbers, okay? I, I, I don't know how many tall buildings are in Chattanooga. In I live in Manhattan, every building is tall. Short buildings are 20 stories tall. Right, so I, I go into elevator banks. Eighty percent of buildings look like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. <laughs> Here we are, twentieth and twenty-first century America, and we have people afraid of the number thirteen. <laughs> I feel like taking a sharpie, crossing off the fourteen, saying that's the thirteenth floor. <laughs> Who are you kidding? 